Hey guys, welcome back to Text Connect. Lyocell. It is one of the most talked about fibers of the 21st century. What is Lyocell? What makes it so special and different? Is it sustainable? All these questions will be answered in this video, so stay tuned. Before we start, what is a regenerated cellulosic fiber? In the classification of fibers table, it comes under the man-made fibers section, but it is a natural polymer. The basic building block for it is cellulose, like any other natural fiber. Now rayons are specifically manufactured by extracting cellulose from the natural resources like wood pulp, which is then chemically treated and extruded into yarn. Hence forming a regenerated cellulose yarn. Lyocell is a subcategory of rayon. Hence, it is a regenerated cellulosic fiber. To be even more clear about the regenerated cellulosic fibers, let's have a look at this table. The wood pulp from which the cellulose is extracted is obtained from feedstock like bamboo, beech, birch, eucalyptus and maple which is then processed into forming of viscose or modal, lyocell or acetate. Cotton linters are directly processed to form cupro. All of these are regenerated cellulosic fibers, commonly called as rayons, and lyocell is a subcategory of rayon. You can see different names of fibers like Ecovero and Tencel. These are exclusive products of different companies which are manufacturing regenerated cellulosic fibers. Now let's focus on how lyocell is manufactured and what are its properties. So the production mainly involves raw cellulose, that is wood pulp, which is mixed with NMMO, which is a solvent. What is NMMO? It is N-methylmorpholine N-oxide, which is capable of dissolving cellulose without any further addition of chemicals. So the wood pulp is dissolved in NMMO by heating. Now after dissolving, the formed cellulosic solution is called the dope. A solvent spinning technique that is dry jet and wet spun is used to press the dope through the spinneret into the spin bath where regenerated cellulose fibers precipitate and NMMO solvent is dissolved in the spin bath itself. Now the formed cellulosic fibers which is precipitated is further processed by water washing. It is lubricated, static finished and then after drying is what you get a lyocell filament fiber. Now to produce lyocell staple fiber, the regenerated cellulosic fiber filament is crimped and cut into certain staple length for pressing and packing. Now what happens to NMMO in the spin bath? It is recycled through the solvent recovery system. Now this NMMO solvent would be dilute because it was in the spin bath. Hence it is concentrated again and made available to dissolve more pulp for the process. In comparison with the method of viscose rayon production, the lyocell fiber spinning process is environmental friendly, green technology that eliminates toxic chemicals and chemical reactions and it substantially reduces air and water emissions too. Let's talk about the structure of lyocell fiber. Lyocell fiber has a close to circular cross section. Its longitudinal surface is very smooth and cylindrical. Lyocell rayon fiber is different from viscose rayon fiber in shape and appearance and this differentiation allows lyocell to exhibit better fabric feel and better drape. It is quite different from viscose fiber and native cotton fiber in structure. The cross sections of viscose, lyocell and cotton are shown in the image below and you can see the difference. If we have a closer look, we come to know that lyocell fiber core is mainly composed of numerous fibrils arranged along the fiber axis. Now lyocell has high crystallinity and degree of polymerization. That means it has more number of monomer units, but it has a weaker lateral link between these crystallites. 
Now, what happens is due to these weaker forces, it results in separation of microfibrils at the surface, mostly due to wet abrasion. And this is called fibrillation. These are microfibers or microfibrils, which are typically less than 1 to 4 micrometers in diameter. Because of this, lyocell is in talks when the microfiber pollution is discussed in sustainable textiles. This also results in pilling on the fabric. Let's quickly wind up with the properties. Longitudinal and cross section. It is smooth and cylindrical with no styrations. Tenacity. The tensile strength of lyocell is high in wet and dry conditions owing to high crystallinity and orientation. It has low elongation at the break due to high crystallinity again, but it is often viewed in lyocell fibers that they are quite elastic. The fibers are resistant to wrinkling and bending. Thanks to its breathability, lyocell is an effective antibacterial fiber and great moisture absorbent. It is even better than cotton. So if you tend to sweat a lot or have a skin sensitivity, then it should be your first option. It is lustrous, bulky. The fiber also exhibits good drape and thermal resistance. Lyocell fibers, however, pose a certain problem when dried because of less surface energy and fibrillation. That is splitting of single fiber into little microfibers as we discussed a few minutes ago. Lyocell is so soft to touch that it is often compared to silk. Now compared with other cellulosic fibers, lyocell fiber has excellent properties. Thus, it is widely used in clothing like non-wovens, conveyor belts, industrial filter, materials, even medicine fields. Lyocell fiber can also be blended with cotton, hemp, silk, synthetic fibers, viscose fiber and for textile applications. So this was all about lyocell. Hope you guys now have a clear idea about regenerated cellulose fibers and lyocell. Do let me know in the comment section which fiber would you like to know more about in the next video. I'll be back with it. Keep watching Text Connect, a learning center for textiles.